see right here see these thick weeds and and on both sides in front of the dock and the jet skis and the boat but notice the the absence of weeds up against the dock so these weeds could certainly hold fish but the docks are to me especially attractive because they represent something different <laughs> it's mid-June in the Midwest and and today I find myself in Michigan fishing Michigan waters and I, I'm going to talk, talk to you about jig fish a little bit because it's, it's while it's not prime yet it's getting really close I caught a bunch of fish with it today but they're they're all fairly small but the reality is I figure I'll throw this video out there exactly how I jig fish and when I'm talking about jigs I should be specific here I'm talking about jigs up and under boats docks pontoon boats it's a deadly way to catch summer bass we're just right now in the very end of the post spawn fish are starting to get in at some routine so it's not a dominant pattern yet for big fish I get asked a lot about how do I determine which docks to fish. <laughs> the bad answer to that is, but the honest answer is, it's a lot of trial and error. You can't figure it out unless you go out there and just start skipping all the different docks out in the lake. What I have found over the years is that there's usually a a set of docks or number or several sets of docks that continuously produce while others just never produce. But that doesn't mean that on occasion you can't get a big one in a stretch of docks that don't historically produce for you. So it's, it's really hit and miss. The best answer, I mean, the best way to do it is to cover, hit as many docks as you can. Think about it, just do a numbers game here. I'm more likely to come across some big fish when I hit 250 docks in a day as opposed to 50. So I, I do try to put the troll motor a little on high going around the docks, not like Jim Wheeler, that guy's 100 miles per hour, but that is definitely the goal to hit as many docks as I can. And once I establish which stretch sets of docks have held fish, usually if fish are on the docks, those stretches of docks are going to produce routinely. My tackle is pretty simple. I, I got a seven, and a half, seven foot medium heavy rod with 40 pound braid, I like a high speed reel. The reason I like high speed reel, and I'm talking about an 8.1, 8.3 speed reel, because as soon as I set the hook with that fish underneath all that stuff, and it, all, so many different things that it can get tangled in, I want to reel him in as quickly as I can to get out of there. If it's a big fish, once I get him from out underneath that heavy stuff, then yeah, I'll slow him down, and I'll let the drag take, play, take over and, and play that fish with some finesse. Well, can you see weeds are important? You mix the weeds. I mean, there's actually kind of a sandy spot under there on, on the dock. I caught this fish under the pontoon boat, and that's kind of the per perfect setup. You get a little sand, but also weeds. The seven foot medium heavy action rod got some great backbone, but also a nice, soft, fairly fast tip. So I get a good flip action underneath those docks. Without question, my favorite jig of all time is a 9K Elite Lures half ounce flipping jig, green pumpkin with purple. Huh, 
Mwah. Best jig I've ever used around Dax. One of the best jigs I've ever used in any situation when you're calling for jigs. I'd like to match that up with a matching trailer. Uh, this, is, this is not a matching trailer, but a Bass Slammer by Yolders Custom Baits. Everything I've got, everything I'm using, there's, a, there's a, I got a list of all my tackle below. I've also included some links to videos where I've had caught some big fish underneath the docks. Did you see that? So you check those links out below, learn a little bit more about jig fishing in a way that it does certainly work around the Midwest and other parts of the country. Miles of, oh, that one come right off the motor of a boat, those are really good spots to hit because as people put their boats on the shorelanders, often make a little depression, foot sometimes even two feet deeper than the surrounding water. Over the guardrails or the rails on those boat lifts, which is why 40 to 50 pound braid is a necessity. So, this is going to really come into play here in the near future. On um, rather, we're talking about Michiana, the Midwest lakes, tournament waters. It's really skipping docks. If you go to body water and you're fishing a tournament and you're not sure what else to do, don't know the body water that well, it's almost guaranteed here in the next couple weeks from through the last bit of June, July, August, and September. And even early parts of October, skipping docks are going to produce you some better than average fish and make you a competitive angler. I don't know how, can you tell how shallow I am here? You can see I'm a foot and a half deep, and that boat obviously is even shallower. See some rocks nearby and this chara. And you see underneath the, the dock, the weeds aren't less dense. And to me, that's a perfect setup. Thank you for tuning in. Till the next time, we'll see you on the water. Isolated dock like that sometimes can be exactly where a big one might be, or in that case, that little one actually bit it under dock and swam out with it.